The other day I had to file a one-time social assistance request for my grandmother. After putting some time into this issue, I learned that I, myself, can also file for two types of social assistance, I started this process. Logically, it appeared that there wasn't much to be done, and as a result, I would end up with six months of tiny but monthly payouts. Small stuff, but still, when visiting a municipal building, I ran into one very unpleasant feeling. I felt some sort of humiliation each time I was doing this and was present in this environment, basically begging for social assistance for my grandmother and myself, while writing in the applications phrases such as, due to hardship and so on, but we do not suffer hardship, everything is fine and I do not want to lie about it. What type of feeling is that? Is it my subconscious that signals me of some hidden threats? It feels like I'm selling my fortune for a pittance. I stopped filing the paperwork. Were those the right signals of threat since these types of institutions are busy with buying out people's rights for pennies? You did the right thing, colleague Arden, when you listened to your intuition and stopped this type of beggary. I apologize to colleagues for this term, but it exactly reflects what is going on. You understood that exactly right, what they are precisely doing there. On the one hand, it is a normal social institution, one that does the right thing in regards to taking care of people, it helps those who found themselves in a difficult situation, or are unable to work due to some type of disability, to receive a little help from the state, from the government. But there are, of course, pitfalls. And the colleague recognized it very precisely. I must humiliate, belittle myself, agree with the fact that I am in need and thus, take from the government what it offers me. To lose my dignity, to become a beggar who I am not. Practically, on one side, you commit to cheating, or forgery, on the other. And it seems that the deceit is worth a penny, the government won't lose much. But you know, in the 90s there was a good saying, we do not steal from the government, we just compensate for the damages suffered prior. It's good humor, of course, and it makes your actions seem better. But the reality is different. After admitting something three times, after lying three times you make yourself vulnerable. You give the government an excuse to treat you like a beggar, like someone who is in debt. And the next time it will come to you and tell you, now, you do as I say, not a big deal, just as it was for you. You won't have the right to deny it, otherwise, the government has the right to retribution. Has the right to belittle you, because in your time, you belittled yourself, you lied to it. And the government accepted it three times, and after that it gets the right to retaliate without any repercussions. The act of deception, the act of belittling, because you agreed to it. The one who acts this way no longer belongs to a warrior caste, he leaves it immediately. Then, of course, he will fall out of the caste of merchants. He will get to the level of a laborer, that is, a serf peasant. A serf, the one who will be tied to the land, with no right to leave this land without permission. Because the government will say, I am the one that helped you, I provided for you. So our relationship is slightly different, you owe me. 
I certainly won't accept your money, although I'm actually doing that already. You are the one paying me a monthly income tax, as it is called nowadays. And you also agree to it. Although the knowledge of laws, for example, suggests that serfs are usually the ones to pay the poll tax, the free folk do not pay. And as a result, they do not pay its current analogy, the income tax either. This is similar to a social contract, the topic for another discussion. Whereas in this case, it's about the fact that the government may place additional demands on you, and you will be obligated to follow them. Because if you don't, it will turn on its entire mechanisms of repression, in order to prove to you that you have no right to freedom. Partially, in many ways, people who faced a violation of their rights may not realize that but nonetheless it is true. No violation of rights has ever occurred because they have already given them away. Through these very facts of deception, this violation of agreements, even the minor ones, but still violations, and in many ways, what they have now, they totally deserved it. Listen to your intuition. If it tells you that it's better not to ask for anything at this moment, it's better not to deal with social systems, and not to receive any benefits, because otherwise you will lose something very significant. Something much more than money. It is certainly better to stay away from such things. It's clear that when you're totally powerless, and you realize that you simply will not survive, and this here is entirely about survival, then in this case, of course. But think again. Maybe everything is not as bad. Maybe there's no need for this kind of begging and pleading for help. It is a profound question, it has a mystical meaning. On the one hand, what's the big deal? But then when your rights start to crumble and you begin to wonder why they are being violated, and right there pops out a random fellow who tells you to get lost since you have no rights at all, you will feel it very quickly, but you will not associate it with a once committed action which you confirmed three times, proving that you have no rights, that you need the government. And then when you face a difficult situation, you come to the government asking for protection, but the government says, why should I do that? You got hurt because you exposed yourself. People don't connect these things together, they come to the police station, they say they've been hurt, robbed, stolen from, insulted, they want to file a complaint, but instead they are told to go away. They don't connect these things together. They are publicly humiliated, forced to do things they haven't planned on doing. And their offender gets away with everything. They don't connect those things. And the actual reason is simple. They reach the bottom of their caste rankings, so low that anyone has the right to hurt them and get away with it. They simply once said, what a big deal. I am entitled to, I am poor so I will take it. And at that very moment they agreed to being poor, being powerless, agreed that they are serfs. It's a difficult question. Some will say, what kind of formulas are those? We sort of live in the 21st century, in a democratic society, there are other laws, other rules in place. But how many times do you need to fall to see that this is also a hoax, it's an illusion. There is no democracy. There is no equality of rights.
Look around and you'll see that it is not the way it is. It is better to get rid of illusions than keep protecting rights you do not possess, did not possess and will never possess in the current situation. It's better not to take without a reason for it than to humiliate yourself to the point when what you've been given becomes a motive. That is why, colleague, I applaud your intuition. You did the right thing.